How many are blessed? Always. It's so good to have you out here again tonight, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be in service with you. And so tonight we're just looking forward to to letting God bless. Uh, that's what we came for, amen? Right. We came to let God bless. And I, I would dare ask the question, how many in this house, when she was singing that song, Ain't No Grave, going to hold my body down? How many really believe that tonight? Do you believe that there ain't no grave going to hold your body down? My friend, I want to tell you something. There ain't no grave that can hold our body down when Jesus is on our side. Amen? I ask you to worship with my lovely wife as she continues to bless us in song tonight.
my sister with me tonight, and we don't sing together very much. We, we go to church together, but sometimes we don't sing together very much. So I'm going to call on her to come up here with me and do something we don't get to do very often. When you grow up, when we were kids, seven and eight years old, we sang together every church time we had the opportunity. And then we grew up and got married and had kids, and we don't sing together as much as we used to. But that, that bond is special. Amen. Uh, and, and I love my sister very much. So. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on now. Say it like you mean it tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm ready for this thing. I'm ready for God to move tonight. He's in the house. How many knows he's in the house tonight? I'm believing that God's going to do something awesome here. 
As a matter of fact, I believe that he's ready to do it right now. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you tonight, but I, I'm ready for him to pour out his Holy Spirit on me in ways above and beyond measure. Amen? I'm ready for him to move in a way beyond uh, uh, an imagination tonight. And so I ask you, if you would, to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 16. Hallelujah. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. A very familiar passage of Scripture tonight. And I'm sure that for the walls and many other ministers have ministered on this uh, 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 quite a bit. And tonight I'm going to take my jab at it. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. We're going to begin to read at verse number 19. When you have it, I ask you to please stand for the reading of the Word. Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 19, it says, And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the, unto the rooms, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and make their feet fast in the stocks. Here's the verses that I want to get to tonight. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there it is again, church, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were were loose. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject, shake the foundations. How many know tonight that we need to shake the foundations? We need to shake the foundations of the church world. We need to shake the foundations of America. We need to shake the foundations of our individual lives. And I believe tonight that God has come into this house to meet with the people that are so hungry for Him to move in a way in a way uh, only God can move. So I want to ask you tonight, are you ready for God to shape your foundation? Pray with me, gracious Heavenly Father. We come before you tonight. We ask that you, Lord, would continue to bless this uh, uh, service. Lord, anoint these clay lips to free uh, to speak from your oracles and not from this flesh and body. Father, I pray right now that you would bind the enemy and release your holy anointing uh, to continue to flow in this place tonight. And Father, may you have your way in this house. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Would you give the Lord a, a, a praise offering to God? Hallelujah. I want to look at verse 25 once again. It says, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. See, we must first tonight, we must first recall how Paul and Silas ended up in the inner dungeon or in the inner prison. If you will remember, there was a damsel who was possessed with a spirit of divination according to the scripture in verse number 16. And I want you to understand that that spirit of divination is a python spirit. I don't have time to get into that tonight. That's a message in itself. And this python spirit has wrapped itself around her and, and she followed 
uh, uh, these men for many days crying out, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. There came a place in this that the Apostle Paul grew uh, greatly annoyed. I believe the Bible says that he was grieved. And, 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 and he turns around and he says to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the Bible says that he came out the same hour. I want you to know tonight that the Apostle Paul is possessing the same kind of authority that I talked about last night. I'm here tonight to tell you that if you were here last night, you know that I talked about Jesus and the woman with the infirmity 18 years. This woman walked around with the bow in her back. Jesus sees her and he commands when he calls her. He says, I want you to come to me. And she obeys the call and comes to Jesus. He speaks to the spirit that is upon her body and said, woman, be thou loose of thy infirmity. And that same anointing the apostle Paul possesses and he says to this he says to this woman that has the spirit of Python on her he said I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus notice he's not rebuking the woman he's rebuking the spirit that is upon the woman you and I church have that same authority tonight to speak under the power and the option of Holy Spirit to say in the name of Jesus I command you say So we find here tonight, the Apostle Paul is greatly annoyed. How many are in this place? You, you, I, I, I'll just tell you right now. I've been there a time or two. I've been there to where somebody just absolutely pestered me. <laughs> amen. 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 All they have to do is pastor. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm here tonight to tell you that, that Paul was annoyed with this woman. And I, I've been there. I've had people that just absolutely, they were a thorn in my side. To the place that I said, you know what? Enough is enough. Amen. And when you get sick and tired of something, finally you get to the place that you say, you know what? I'm fed up. How many have ever been fed up? Oh, come on now. Those of you that didn't raise your hand, I'll just act like I didn't see it. Because I know at one time or another, everybody in the house has been fed up. Either it's with your husband or your wife, your son or your daughter or somebody, but you've been fed up with them. My wife never gets fed up with me. Praise the Lamb of God. But can I tell you tonight that he was he wasn't fed up with the woman, he was fed up with the spirit that was upon the woman. So much so that he said, you know what? I've had about enough of this. See, I've learned that when we get to a place that we've had enough of Satan coming at us with everything he's got, throwing everything he's got at us, that we'll say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Satan, enough is enough. You get your hands off of me. You get your hands off my children. You get your hands off my job. You get your hands off my finances. You get your hands off this. You get your hands Why? Because enough is enough. And Satan, you're not going to bother what God said was mine any longer. Amen. That's right. He grew greatly annoyed, the Bible said. And so therefore, the Bible says that he turns around and he rebukes the spirit that's upon this woman. When her master saw their hope for gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. And the Bible says that they brought them before the rulers. When they bring them before it, I call them the religious politicians. When they brought them before the religious politicians, here's what happens. They, they say, here is our story. Everybody's got a story, amen? Amen. And whenever they present their story and they tell them all that had gone on, they decided that they would strip Paul and Silas of their clothes. They would beat them and then they would make examples out of them because they decided that they were going to they were going to put them in chains and throw them in prison. But not just any prison cell. They were going to throw them in the inner dungeon. Okay. <laughs> 
everybody to know this is what we think about Paul. So we're going to make examples. I think Satan was sitting there saying, I'm going to make examples out of you. You know what?